Okay, an update on the Grizz situation. She's under that tree. You'll never see her. I can barely see her with the binoculars. There's two trees right there. She's on the right-hand tree. There's like a bush tree, a bush tree, and then two trees in the middle. She's sleeping under the right-hand tree, not the one that has the, the split in it, the single tree. So it's a big mound. And I can see her in the just because I know she's there. If I were to look and not know, I would just think it's a big rock or something. But uh, these people were watching for a long time. She was eating. So she made her way up to the tree, and I saw her rubbing her body on it, you know, itching and scratching. It's a nice shady spot under there. She just pounced down and said, good night. They're going to send me some pictures. And I said, just let me know that I was the one that loaned you the binoculars. And I'll know that it's this Grizz. So, my, uh, check out my new binoculars, man, Celestron. They make a damn good set of binoculars. And I got 10 by 50s. So, everything I spent on these binoculars, we're going to look right now, was worth it just for today. And letting those people use them, too. So, everybody got to see her. Yeah, she's still there. She's a big lump. See, if you were hiking out there, there is no way you would see that bear until it was too late. Because she's just a big lump. So that's why you have to be careful in Grizz country. You just never know. And they say make noise and everything, but if she's sleeping, and they're going to get defensive, I am so glad I bought these binoculars. They've already paid for themselves. Because I was watching her walk, and she just turned around and stopped and looked across over here. And I had like a 10 or 15 second stare down with her. I'm not saying she was looking at me. But I got to look her right in the face. That was awesome. So we're going to head further. That's, that's Yellowstone right there. That's the marker for the park where those people are. Where we stopped the other day. I got a video of Shaggy and Patchy up there. So technically, she's outside of Yellowstone in the Gallatin National Forest. So if she, she needs to go this way, she'll be a lot safer over here. Lot, well, there's laws protecting her either way. And Nobody's going to hunt her. But, you know, the park boundaries are just something in our heads. But it does have a reality of, you know, the protection that's afforded her. But even in the Gallatin National Forest, nobody's going to hunt her or anything. So we're going to turn and we're going to go up into the park. That was awesome. Man, that was awesome. She said they were watching them for about 10, 15 minutes before I got here. And that lady was nice enough to point. Because just somebody, just because somebody stopped on the side of the road here, it doesn't mean anything. But she pointed, so I turned my head and I saw the Grizz. I'm going to let this car pass. But here's the sign that goes, that takes us into Yellowstone. I want to let these cars pass because I, I don't want to be in a, I want to be just kind of up by ourselves and, take our time and there's another couple cars behind me. Yeah, they're coming up there. It's a truck too. I don't want to be, and I just want to have a solo ride through here. These people are from England and they're staying up at uh, where the Quake Lake is up there. See, this guy's This has been an awesome trip. This is my new favorite section of Yellowstone. I've been through here many times in, in the other years going to Big Sky, but two days in a row now I've seen a Grizz. And I'm not in the other part of the park where I've got to wait in line to get in, and I've got, you know, million miles of Grizz like that in, in the rest of the park would create a, oh my God, a 20 mile pile up. Here, you got a couple of cars, you got a couple, you know, some people you can talk to and share the experience with, and it's private. It's awesome. This is my favorite part of the park right now. And you don't have to pay. There's the sign you're in. I mean, technically, you have to have a park pass, which I do. I have a, a yearly pass. But, you know, I doubt any ranger is going to stop and ask if you got a pass right here. So there's nowhere to buy one. 
So it's an awesome section of the park. It's the extreme western section of Yellowstone. It's awesome. And there's a lot of grizz. And there's actually hiking trails right there that you can go into the backcountry. Of course, I can't do any of those with the dogs. So... I'll be honest with you, I probably wouldn't do it if I didn't have the dogs by myself. Not that I think having a second person is any safer or a third person. It's just a scary experience when you're by yourself in grizz country. I do it on the mountain bike. There's two fishermen. But uh, being on foot's a different matter. You feel a little safer on a mountain bike, even though it's an illusion. You just, you just do. You know, you can move at 30, 40 mile an hour if you have to. Not any faster than a Grizz. But we're going up, but hopefully we'll see another one. Those binoculars just paid for themselves. I'll clear the video in case, uh, save battery in case we find another one. I know that the video, you got nothing out of that probably, but maybe just the excitement of the experience is probably it. If you're going to see them closer, you're going to have to come here yourself. We're clear.